Before I jump into describing this video and what's going to be in and what inspired me to do it, I also want to give um, a little appreciation to one of my friends. Um, she is, um, I've known her since ninth grade. We've known each other since ninth grade and she's also on a spiritual journey. Um, and back in December, November, I want to say November, or December, she, we were talking about moon cycles and like she was more into that part of things um, and really, you know, working more with the moon cycle and the moon phases. And I do some work with the moon phases more so with my um, interpretations, you know, um, not as much with the actual, um, you know, spiritual practices and things like that. So look at what moon phase were you born under. I'm going to just do a quick download of what that means. And it adds an extra layer to the moon sign that you already have. You don't really know where your moon is what house, but then we can add a layer of interpretation of how does your moon function. Um, what I want to start off by saying is I know that I'm working on some of these other videos. So I know I said I was doing the Eros and Psyche videos. They are on the way. But at the same time with that topic, I really want to make sure that I'm clear in how I deliver the information because, you, you, you know, with asteroids that can sometimes be confused with certain other as you know astrological placements or planets i want to be very careful to get this right um so i'm really working on these the eros and psyche ones in a way in which i feel like i can deliver it without confusing it with other planets that also have that deep intense feeling you know so i'm really trying to um, work through that the reason i'm saying this is because sometimes i will you know tell people, um, people give me suggestions for videos. If I feel like it'll help a large amount of people, I'll typically do the video, um, but it, the timing might change, right? So I can't tell you what time or what day I'm gonna do the video. Um, the only guarantee that I can give are people who are clients where I tell them, okay, you're, it's your turn for the reading, you can get in three weeks, or it's your month, you're gonna need your reading this month. I say all that because um, I, with spiritual work, with content creating, I do try to be regular one. I post videos one to two times a week, but at the same time with the topics of the video, I have to go with what I feel. And if I feel that I have to get a video out, I have to do it. So this might seem random to people like, wait, what about the series, the house series? I just did a house video and I'm working on some of the other ones. So um, with that said, these are my original thoughts. Obviously I did not create <laughs> the topic itself. Um, but I try to put a, you know, creative spin or put a different spin on something, explain it in a way that maybe you have not heard it before in order to really understand this. So we're going to dive into, let's just briefly remember what the moon is. <clears throat> okay. The inner feelings and the drive. All right. Think about driving a car. The moon is not the outside. It's not the color of the car. It's the internal it's the things that make the car work and function. And if something goes wrong with that engine or, um, you know, the, the motor, something that's internal of the car, you cannot drive the car or it's going to sputter, right? Or it's going to be messed up and when you turn it on, it's going to make a weird sound. So the moon, think of the moon as like needing to be taken care of needing to dive into things that make us feel comfortable and feel good. It's different than the sun where a sun can be a little performative, right? Even if it's a sign that's not all that extroverted, the sun is what you are performing in an essence, right? Um, the way you want to reach somebody, if you really want to understand what motivates them and connect to them, we got to start with the moon, not the sun. The sun is going to feel like, oh, wow, we share, we share similar traits, but it's not going to be the same as when that moon connection happens, right? The moon can be that response to the world that cannot be visibly seen. I tell people all the time, if you have children, cool, let's start with the sun sign. But the moon sign is going to tell you a lot of how, why did my kid react that way? Their, their sun sign is this. Because look at their moon. Their moon, You, if, if anyone feels excited, happy, compromised, angry, frustrated, any emotions, whether good or bad, that moon energy is going to come out. So it's very important when you have anyone close to you to understand their moon. Um, what truly motivates a person, you know, is the moon. The sun is what you are comfortable showing the world. There are so many other ways I can just break down the sun. But to keep this simple, I'm comfortable showing Virgo traits. No matter what, right, there's, there's a default of this is what I'm confident about. I'm confident about this Virgo energy and this is what I show people. Um, whether I'm confident about this or that, it's the Virgo energy that comes out. Um, it's the traits that comprise your core self. Okay, um, but the moon is what you need to feel comfortable and in sync with yourself. So you can have a person who overdoes it with sun energy, who's maybe always getting praise and attention for the sun traits that they're showing. But if that moon is not being met, 
you can find a person who feels dissatisfied. So it's important to understand where we are within that um, within that that pendulum. Moon cycles echo the changing nature of our emotions in order to process life. So the moon cycles, I do have timestamps for the moon cycles. They help us see the evolution of how we're feeling. That's why the moon changes every two to two and a half days, okay? The moon changes very quickly. And so not only does the sign change, but also we go through different cycles. So one thing I wanna share is, okay, from the new moon to the full moon, so from the new moon leading up to the full moon, those of you within those range, there's a range within that, right? <clears throat> um, the, between the new moon to the full moon, which include other moon cycles, we'll go over that, um, it's energy of effort, designing and producing. So if you, there's something about the doing it, the process of it, okay? If you were born under maybe a waxing gibbous moon, okay? That is in between the new moon and the full moon, okay? Um, if you are born under a, let's see what else we have here. If you were born, let me see what I wrote down because I had this. And I also had behind me, for those of you who see my video, I have the moon cycles on my wall. Um, people who are born on the first quarter moon, people who are born in a waxing crescent moon, the, these individuals are in this bucket here. And people who are born af between the full moon. So the full the full moon has happened and now you're waiting for the next new moon. This is the These are the um, signs, not signs, it's the moon phase that deal with culmination, introspection, and reflection. An example of that is the winding gibbous moon. So let's jump into some of this. Uh, flavor about the moon differs by house. The moon needs to be somewhere where it can feel fed or feel like home, be loyal to its own needs, and to feel accepted. It's going to require a lot of understanding of does that does the moon function naturally well in that house in your chart? Um, it differs by sign, right? Cancer, obviously the moon is cancer. Obviously the moon um, is exalted in Taurus. The moon is it's difficult to naturally tap into the efforts of the moon in Capricorn and Scorpio. Now by difficult, it means that natural internal expression of what makes you comfortable and to be at peace with that is a little bit difficult. Capricorn is not really attaching to the emotions, right? Um, we're dealing with the, the a feeling of needing to um, you know, have control or whether you're dealing with Capricorn and Scorpio. Um, and it can make a really motivated um, individual. It's not a bad placement, but you understand the moon's natural nurturing ability is, is going to be more free flowing, more natural. The moon's energy flows more natural in these signs here. Whereas even with Scorpio, the moon in Scorpio is in fall. And you're like, well, that's a water sign, yes. But as we already know, Scorpio is intense and it needs to trust. There's a whole process with Scorpio where the moon is not naturally going to express, I'm not naturally going to nurture you. We're not naturally going to, um, you know, feel this kind of connection to you until we've gone through this intricate process needed with the Scorpio moon. So that's what I mean by that. Okay. And there's nothing bad about it. Okay. There's nothing bad about having a Scorpio moon or Scorpio Cap or Capricorn Scorpio, um, Capricorn moon. <laughs> it just means it's a little bit more difficult for the person. Now you can have a person who's a Capricorn and Scorpio moon in the fourth house it makes it a little bit easier. Um, but where the person makes up for their emotional output in other ways, these are people that might manifest more outwardly. They are going to put more energy into the things outside of them or, you know, obtaining certain things more so than the free flowing need and the nurturing, the care, um, and the, you know, the creative efforts even as well with the Cancer and Taurus um, ability to be really creative in, as well, not just about the emotions, but also the creative energy. Um, so we'll talk, you know, that's a whole different conversation. I do have moon videos um, by degree that can make a difference as well. Do you have a daytime or nighttime chart? Um, if you have a nighttime chart, it says that the moon is supposed to be more um, of a, you know, of the driving factor in your chart, maybe not as much as the sun. Um, would depend. You have some people who have their moon and their sun um, in the same hemisphere. So of their chart. Moon cycles are considered also to be in relation to the sun. So you see that a new moon is a conjunct, okay? So for example, there's a conjunct, there's a square. We want to also understand the sun's, um, the sun and the moon's relation to each other at the moon cycle is a part of this as well. So before we dive into the moon cycles, and again, if that's what you're here for, there's time stamps, go to that. But thinking beyond one placement to make interpretation, I like to help people understand and see examples, okay? Um, and so with my own chart, I'm a sun in Virgo with a daytime chart. 
okay? And there, I wonder, and I'm, I'm going to do some more research on this because I haven't heard it, um, but, you know, it might be one of the many books that I have. If you have a daytime chart, are you more likely to be a day person? If you have a nighttime chart, are you more likely to be a night person? I know that with daytime charts, with daytime charts and nighttime charts, there are certain planets that are said to be more favorable in your chart if you're a daytime or nighttime. That's a whole different video concept if, I, if you're interested in me doing that. Um, that's more of the traditional Hellenistic approach the concept of sect, that certain planets um, are going to have more meaning or more favorable meaning or more be more challenging depending on, you know, where the sun um, was when you were born or if your moon was, um, if your moon is, the, you know, your daytime chart person. So, any, I mean, nighttime person. Anyway, um, and it's called diurnal and it's called nocturnal. That's the official term for it. But anyway, point is, um, I'm an early person. Um, I'm early to rise and always have been even when there's nowhere to be or no schedule. So if it's like Saturday morning, I'm still, I might sleep in a little bit more, but I'm still up early. I can still do things early. I'm the type of person like, I have to go to the store. I'm going to do it early. I'm going to get it done. It's not crowded. Um, <laughs> get out of there. Um, the sun is at the first degree. So I think that, you know, we know the first degree using the astrology degree system that um, Nikola Stanjovic does is this Aries energy to that. It's a, I need to do this. It's a very spontaneous type of energy but in Virgo it's not going to be a spontaneous person it's more so the tasks and having to get things done I'm more comfortable with daytime activities I'm the type of person I'd rather go in early so I can leave so I can leave on time right I'd rather get everything done why make the connection so I can rush home and be comfortable doing the things that intrigue and interest me the most as a Sag moon my Sag moon is in the fourth house at the 17th degree of you know, 17th degree being dealing with like uh, Leo energy, Virgo, Virgo and, and wanting to be at home is not surprising, but the Sag moon, the moon being in the fourth, fourth house is where I feel the most comfortable. Um, in Sagittarius, it's like, I have to be doing things that intrigue and interest me. It's not just about being home. It's about taking care of my home. It's about um, having a relaxing space to learn and um, do all the things that I've been, you know, I feel, um, you know, enthusiastic to do for the day. Um, 17th degree is like my own hobbies and the, my own interests in that way. So I don't want to go into a whole thing about me and my chart, but I'm showing the the, the way in which you should be connecting some different placements. Um, how comfortable you feel between the sun and moon may rely on other parts of the chart. Let's be honest, right? Again, I talked about an afflicted sun. If someone has an afflicted moon, if you have a lot of squares and oppositions to your moon, um, if your moon is in a difficult house for the moon's expression you might feel like there's extra work you have to do when it comes to the emotional um your emotions all right so i'm a wax and gibbous moon by description uh, functions well for virgo sun so let's jump into the moon phases first we're going to start with the new moon sun moon conjunct okay that's when the sun and moon are you know at the same sign internally driven by what is possible hopeful and optimistic so these are little notes that are not going to be in full sentences because some of this i just wrote as bullet points kind of and then i turned it into like a little paragraph so um just be aware of that it's kind of written like notes not like a full paragraph um less rigid and aware of new opportunities the person is less rigid they're aware of new opportunities there's an understanding that something has to happen but it's not there yet um, the new moon you, symbolically is this idea of like planting the seed, um, pa planting the hope, um, you know, being more invested in something that has not yet been created or seen, you know, very Piscean type of energy to be, you know, in a way, new and raw energy, you know, that's why people say you manifest on a new moon or you're supposed to, um, because that is the time where opportunities are right and so this can create a person emotionally who kind of is only up and up they're intrigued by new things new experiences new people new situations now again you would have to go into interpretation if you're like wait that's not me you were born under a new moon but you're like wait um i'm not like that well look is the degree making it harder for you to be like that and a lot of times some of you guys have blockages if you have your moon is is aspecting chiron squaring chiron of course, you're you're you need to take care of that Chiron, and your moon energy is probably going to open up a little bit better. Um, let me give an example. The energy feels like a marriage proposal. Okay, I'm going to use this analogy this whole time. This is original. I just made this up. Um, <laughs> the energy of a new moon feels like a marriage proposal. You feel like excited, but you know something else is on the way. It's not there in front of you yet, but this is the person who emotionally is like, okay, let me try this out. Let me just see. All right. And you get easily stirred, maybe easily involved in new opportunities, new experiences. That's where you can have perhaps a Sag Moon person who is more about that, whereas the other Sag Moon person is more about the process 
or the reflection period. So we'll get to all the moon cycles for this, we're starting with the new moon. Now, next we have the waxing crescent. This is gonna produce a semi-square, okay? Now, the semi-square is going to sometimes be these internal conflicts that can arise in a person. And as we know, um, you know, these energies could, they could be a little bit of a struggle at times, okay? Um, for some people, a semi-square produces that level of internal, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to um, express. Let me think about this. Let me feel this. It's nervous energy when the person is driven by reassurance. So this is the person whose emotions might, they need to like be really aware of like, wow, I'm feeling this way. I need to do something with it. There's a more gentle approach to the emotions because the person might have to really understand and navigate them. Um, this person might be compelled to act based on the starings inside. So as the new moon is about hope and optimism and new chances, and let me give you a second chance. This one is, let me really, I, I'm not feeling, you know, that I'm really in, in, in sync with myself, but I know that there's something I need to, I need to do. Um, you know, it's a little bit of questioning things. Um, it can be testing different things out, semi square, think about the sun and the moon, not really being in alignment. What you are expressing and what you are feeling is not really the same, but you're aware that there might be something you need to, to do. Um, and so this person, this the emotions here can be somewhat sometimes not all the way 100% sure. Um, and so it could mean a person who, you know, is compelled to, like I said, compelled to act, um, but it, it it's it's not always in alignment with what they might truly feel until they really dive into understanding and questioning themselves. Can probably second guess their own emotions, perhaps. The energy might feel like the months leading up to the wedding. You question if you're making the right decision, you know, uh, but you're doing it anyway, right? Uh, so that's the energy of the waxing crescent. It's like this questioning, but it's like, you know that it's leading. The thing with the moon cycles, they're leading to something. It's a continuum, right? Um, so this is where the person, it's not necessarily that they're doing anything rash or brash, but it's like this kind of unsteady energy. Things don't feel quite right. So this person is always in a way questioning, examining, or needing to feel uh, out things before they actually commit emotionally to something. Um, now, the first quarter, um, waxing half moon, sometimes it's called, it's a sun moon, square each other. Now, this is a burst of energy because squares can produce action and tension. And I know a lot of times we talk about squares, it's like, oh no, this is, this is, sometimes challenges are the way we grow. So it can be a way that something compels the person to anticipate something. You feel something. So the other moon cycle was about the person having to dive through the process and question things. Um, and sometimes before you get to the action, you have to question things. You have to see what's not working, right? We think about the waxing crescent. Sometimes it's like you, 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 you're presenting something on the outside, but on the inside, you're like, wait, that doesn't really match up. I really have to feel this out first. Um, you know, this could be person who may doesn't rush into anything um, or they don't like to rush into anything. But with the first quarter moon, we have more of a something has to happen. That's the square. Square is like tension. Something has to give. The person is um, always feeling like there's some big move thing or move to make. Um, you're prepared to emotionally respond to what's to what is around you. So it's gonna be the person who's kind of more um, you can see more of a spontaneous type of emotional attachment or emotional response to things. Um, think of game time and first quarter in sports. That's kind of where you have the most energy. You're trying to show off, right? Sports, but that, that's not the point of sports. It's competitive, but you know the first quarters when you have that yeah, I'm going to do this. Whereas every other quarter, you now need to examine it, right? Because once you start going through the different quarters, it's now you know, you now know. Remember, we questioned everything before, but now you know, you know, things are coming down to the final end. That's what the later part of the game. But with the first quarter, think of it as that way. Um, it's a, it's a stirring. It's a thing. There's tension there, right? Um, and this could be the person who even mentions it. They could be like, you know what? Um, I didn't like how I came off the other day. So I'm going to, you know, I want to actually do this. Like internally, they had time to reflect and like, you know what? I didn't like that yesterday. I'm going to change how I did it. It's like always being aware that something has to be done. Um, the energy feels like planning the wedding, picking out the venue, the rings, and starting to actually look forward to the event. It's the things that I need to do in order to make this happen. So that's where um, we would have this energy show up. All right, so the wax and gibbous. Okay, so the sun and moon. So the moon we know is the center of this conversation we're having, but the sun, the sun 
and the moon's um, relationship to each other during the moon cycle is is guiding this whole process. So um, sun, moon, sesquiquadrate, sesquiquadrate. Um, that's a minor aspect, a minor aspect that deals with blind spots, being unaware. Um, different than a semi-square, a semi-square is more that internal tension. A sesquiquadrate can happen where there is a need, a further need to examine and understand um, your own um, confidence or your own projection in accordance to what you feel inside. And how to constantly make sure that lines up. Those of you who might have this waxing give this um, connection, understand that. It can feel... Um, what you present on the outside is not necessarily what you feel on the inside. And though you can perform sun, it can sometimes mean the moon needs to be examined and make sure that the essence of the moon is being expressed. But until then, there's a process that you're de that you're de devoted to. Um, so again, so the sesquic quadrate is minor. Um, again, minor aspects can have big impact. Um, I when the um, Mercury and Aries. Um, a couple of months ago at this point, I think two months, two and a half, three months, whatever, um, months ago, when Mercury was in Aries, it was creating a sesquiquadrate with one of my natal signs, my natal planets. And um, I was experiencing something that the major aspects were not explaining. Like I looked at my aspects, I'm like, this transit doesn't make sense using the major ones. So when I looked at my minor ones, something I was experiencing, it wasn't anything serious, but it made sense. So uh, minor aspects can sometimes create, it's more of a subtle energy. It's not big, it's not grand, but it's also the, sub, the small things we can miss, especially with this one in particular. So you might be invested in doing things that make you feel better. You have a more, it's more of an awareness of like, uh, you know, needing to lead up to something, you know? So when you're trying to make yourself feel better, think about it. You're doing it because you're like, if I feel better than this, if I do these little things here, then I feel better. Um, so that's why you may be more in interested in refining, improving, and working to build up to the full moon. Um, this could be more of a person who internally is, is good at doing certain things in order to, you maybe even, you do things that keeps your mind off certain things, but you want to be careful because you have to understand the process of your emotions can, you can get lost in them. You can get lost in the process of, I feel this and I feel that and I feel this. And it's so internal, but you want to sometimes make sure that the things you're feeling inside, um, sometimes they do need to come to the surface and sometimes they do need to be um, you need to address certain people. You need to express what you really have been feeling, even if it's creatively, right? We're not just talking about the moon in terms of our emotions to other people. It's the moon is internally what drives us. And if there's certain things that we enjoy, that we like, that give us joy, we can sometimes share a little bit of that with people around us. But um, the energy of this to make it make more sense to you and you can connect the dots is the week before wedding. The week before wedding. You're not even thinking, you're think you're not really thinking about the wedding. You're thinking about the things and the little specifics. And you gotta make sure this and this was this deposit paid, this deposit was paid, quality check, check the venue, um, book the rehearsal dinner. You might put more effort in preparation in the big day. So that's the energy of the wax and give us moon person, okay? Putting more energy into something, um, the small things. That's why I said my wax and give is the, by definition, actually the emotional lens of it. it. It relates really well to my Virgo energy in the first place. So that's why I think my Sag moon, um, you know, I mean, I think I can be very responsive to things. I think that's a very Sag moon thing. I'm very responsive, good and bad. But, but at the same time, um, it works well when I'm a, with the Virgo, I'm like, oh, that needs to be fixed. And I have the energy to do it through my moon, my moon need to, you know, um, to, if I'm enthusiastic about something, if I'm intrigued by something, if it's something that I need to research, figure out, dive myself into, and then through the Virgo lens, present it as something that's organized, I could do that. All right, so with the opposition, so the moon and sun are in opposition. What we're dealing with here is an awareness, okay? There is, it's not underlying like some of the other moon cycles. It's not hidden. It's not a blind spot. It is obvious. Um, that is why it's a seen in the full moon is seen as a time to notice things for culmination to come about for you to, even epiphanies to happen during full moons. When a full moon happens, something is going to occur. That is why when, you know, movies and TV shows are like, oh, it was a full moon. The full moon means everything that's been leading up is now in your face and it's causing an emotional reaction. So the full moon stereotype or prototype is always about something crazy going on or something wacky going on. But we know in spirituality and astrology it doesn't necessarily mean it's crazy. It means that there is a culminating understanding and awareness. Some people at that point, the full moon, if it gives you an epiphany, you now know what to do next. You you know, a lot of times you're not changing. The thing is with the full moon, it isn't the new moon. The new moon is new. Let's see what we have. The full moon is the thing that you have been doing leading up to that. You should start to see something 
that is now um, ingrained. There's something that now occurs that, and again, it can be energetic. I want us to understand these cycles are energetic. It does not mean the day of the full moon, you know, everything you put your work into, you get it. It means that that full moon starts that that experience. It starts that energy. Oh, you, you were working on a project for a long time. doesn't mean the day of the full moon, you get um, the, you get, um, notification that someone is going to approve it or, you know, I don't know, um, you, you submitted a project that you want some funding for. It might be three days after the full moon, you know, because the energy was already started. Now the full moon is passed. So I want to be clear about that. But with the person, you know, you face emotions head on because you notice the inconsistency in feelings. You know them right away, right? You notice it right away. Um, and there's a perceptive level here, perception. Um, we know there's many, many, many different aspects and different placements and different signs and different houses that can indicate intuition. Um, obviously, there are main ones, right? We, there are main um, planets. We would go with the moon. We want to go with, you know, we want to go to the fourth house, the eighth, the twelfth. Okay, now we're going to go to, um, you can go to the ninth. We can go, you know, there's so many places we can go with this. And there's so many different ways to show. We can look at moon, um, uh, Tron Uranus, right, for psychic energy. Um, we can do Mercury and Uranus. I don't want to just say there's one sign, one placement, one cycle associated with that. But you can see a person who is more prone to understanding their emotions, good or bad, good or bad, there's more awareness of, you know, needing to feel a certain, not even needing to feel it, but being and feeling and noticing what they are. It's the action. It is the clear clarity in I am now this. This is how I feel. And forget what you think of me. This is how I feel. The full moon person, especially depending on other aspects, can be that type of person. You could be a person, depending on the placements, are they leading with their emotions? They're leading with their emotions more than they are their sun if they're born under a full moon. Especially, let's say, if they have a nighttime chart or di a nocturnal chart. For sure, they could lead more with the moon um, because it works for them. It, it sometimes can work for the full moon person. Now, the energy of it is the wedding day. It's the big wedding day. Action and emotions must meet. Doesn't matter if you have cold feet. Um, well, it does if you don't want to marry the person. But you wouldn't wait to the wedding day, like, right? It's not a sitcom. It probably should have that conversation ahead of time. But you now have to face that this is reality. Things get real, okay? Things get real. And that, I think, is the same energy of the opposition. It's like, I have to face that this and this, but I want to lead with this. This emotion is feeling, again, that's why I said the person kind of could relate more to the emotional output. And again, it doesn't mean you are an emotional person. Spontaneity, to me, is an emotion, like a part of emotions. Impulsivity, being so excited for something, you have to do it. That's a part of emotions. And we have to, like, redefine what we categorize as emotions to really understand the range in them. So after the big, the big shebang, after the full moon, what happens next, right? You recollect the emotions. You listen to what you feel. If you've gotten a signal from the universe, symbolically through the moon cycles, let's say we've all undergone a full moon, what happens next? Well, if there's been any type of um, sign, signal that you've received, it's now time to internalize that. So you need to listen to what you feel. So this person more under the line and give us, there's a recollection of the emotions. This could be a person that like, has to recollect, has to pause, has to soak them in first. You're not going to get a person, uh, again, look at the whole chart. Um, it, but this is not going to be a person who is um, easily inspired, easily going to do things. It's They're more invested in what they've already um, committed themselves to, perhaps. Because remember, this is coming after a full moon, this energy. You know, you let your emotions flow and re and reflect. You allow the, this, let me sense this, let me feel this out. Let me just be in the moment type of person. Um, well, with the sesquic quadrant, I think that's a little less pressure than the waxing gibbous. Now, the waxing gibbous, that one was more of the, the you know, having to do something, right? Having to fine tune and fix. And this one is more emotional, okay? It's more emotional. So the energy is the honeymoon. The days after the wedding when you're enjoying the new title, you know that there could be things down the road you have to reflect and think about, oh, when we get home, um, you know, somebody, you know, somebody, you know, you, you're changing your name. Are you guys moving in together? What is going on? So the honeymoon aspect of the wine and gibbous is like that reflection, that bliss, that let me just pause and think about what I have before I make any decisions. Let me just be at peace as well. Sometimes you got to leave these people alone. Now again, especially let's say you have a wine and gibbous, um, Pis a Pisces person born under a wine and gibbous and their Pisces energies in the, I don't know, the 12th house. Um, what other house? Even um, second house, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Um, let them reflect. Let them think it out um, before you expect for them to act, 
right? You, you know, especially when we're talking about emotional, right? When you're asking for people to make emotional commitments and emotional decisions and you're tapping into their feelings, you have to sometimes let some people just, you know, you can't rely on them like you would another sign to move a little faster. So last quarter, what we're dealing with here is we're now going to be dealing with um, awareness of tension, right? Um, between expression and feelings. You're responsive and want to make sure that what you project matches what you feel inside. You grow tired of holding it in and some pressure can arise. Um, you know, so it's it's not the ones where we're unaware, we're not sure, we don't know what to feel. It's a little bit different. Um, this is facing things head on. Um, so whether, you know, the last quarter, being born under the, in the last quarter, uh, could be the person that's a little bit more direct. Um, you know, they, they have nothing to lose. It's like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like what you said. I don't like what you just did. There could be more of that or positive. I don't always want to make it look negative. Um, it could be a person who is just more emotionally expressive. Okay. Um, this could be the person who is willing to work things out depending on the, the other placements in the sign, you know, depending on I mean, the other chart, you know, um, you would become aware of the tension. You realize it's there. This could be a person who's also initiative in terms of repairing things. Let's say this is a moon and Libra person born in the last quarter. They might be the ones to initiate. Let's talk about this. You know, I didn't like that conversation we just had. And I know I was at fault too. That's a moon and Libra though. But it's not everybody. Um, because sometimes people are wrong. Everybody's wrong at some point, um, especially when you think of your interpersonal relationships and just the, having different opinions, having different emotional responses. Um, you know, this person is, it's the pressure is too much. They don't want, they know something has to be done type of moon person. Not as much of the reflective moon we just saw before. And what I would say is, um, with this in particular, is the person, you know, think about, remember I made the analogy of the first quarter basketball game or whatever game you play. It doesn't have to be basketball. The last quarter is you already know. You've seen the score. You now have to think about what you're going to do next because you don't have optimism and starting out on your side. The first quarter, it's anybody's game. By the last quarter, we now have seen enough. Think about the cycle of the moon. We've now seen enough, okay? Um, so months of the wedding when you experience your first fight and have to learn what works with your partner to resolve the issue. Okay, um, this is an example, right? You, you you know, months later, everything's been good, but then you experience that fight and you can't just let it fester. This is the person who's like, you know, this energy is like, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about what just happened so we can move on. Now, winding crescent, sun, moon, semi-square, okay. Um, so with the winding crescent, you need to make sense of what feelings are necessary and which ones do not produce the best effects on you. This now requires also a little bit of action. Um, but it's also about not needing to address every single thing. So the last quarter is tension. It's clearly we're at odds or the energy within the person is at odds. So it couldn't be sometimes a person who just knows, um, that they have to, um, deal with things a little bit more directly, right? When we're dealing with the last quarter, you have to deal with things a little bit more directly, right? Because it's in your face, it's there and you don't like it to stay there. It's like the person who has to be, um, you know, um, has to clear things out. You know, think about it in that way. The winding crescent is now we have to pick and choose what we feel. We have to allow ourselves to be in alignment. Winding crescent person, you can get a person who's a little bit more chill. Um, they're not as high strung about their emotions. They're not as opinionated. Everything is not a battle with this energy of this person because they're able to kind of filter out what is not needed. Nope, we don't need, I don't need to address that. That's not important. I don't need this. I don't need to be responsive and reactive to every single thing. You may know some people, they have to respond to everything, everything that's said, everything that's done, and they can't just realize something's not for you or realize that something is not in your lane or realize that something does not bring, involve you, right? Everything in the world does not involve you and your, you know, and your opinion is not always needed. And so, you know, it, you, this would be the person who understands that you probably could get into issues with people who are like that because you are like, okay, you felt that way. Why did you need to say it? Right, because you know how to filter out what's not necessary. Now, again, you have to be careful because some things might matter to somebody, but not to you. So you don't want to be so zen and so at peace and so at, oh, nothing matters type of person. But that winding crescent person can, because we also don't remember um, the semi square. You can sometimes not want to deal with certain things. You know, you can be like, ah, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, you know. So it can sometimes be someone who needs to be a little bit more active in their own emotional um, experiences. But again, the energy is like after having moments of bliss. 
catalysts and resolving issues, you learn what to let go and what to address. You learn your partner. You learn, this is the, again, this is the analogy, the wedding analogy. You learn, you know, they like this. I like that. I'm going to leave it alone. So that's it for this video. Um, so I'm just going to um, end this here. If you have any other suggestions about moon cycle videos or anything like that, please drop any suggestions in the comments.